great good morning I love volume. good morning good afternoon good evening welcome to bwtn sports and welcome to our almost breaking news interview with the new commonwealth champion the commonwealth middleweight champion liam cameron liam how you doing i'm good man how are you i'm the new and and the new commonwealth yeah, so middleweight champion sure. yep it feels great doesn't it? i'm sure oh it feels unbelievable but you know what the sad thing is i had a belt since we fight so i'm good today and seeing the belt yeah i've heard it's coming tomorrow so i can't wait to run down to that office i'll be like you seen bolt to it do you know what i mean so i can't wait to see it wow um for those people who who don't know who you are i know i've just introduced you as the commonwealth middleweight champion just give people a little introduction to who you are again liam i'm a new a new born middleweight what's looking to be the number one in britain um liam cameron from sheffield um so all i can say looking to move forward now and do better things for those people who didn't see the epic fight between liam cameron and sam shudy you can see it live on bwtm sports it's there just type in liam cameron sam shudy it's there bwtm sports we had the build up the pre-fight the uh, head to head and the post fight so i was going to try and delay this interview a little longer and try and get it because it's all time schedules and everything i wanted to get it a time where we could get you in a real a busy time to get you in yeah. But um, when you mentioned the thing about you wanting to spar with GGG, I thought, no, no, let's get this in now. So talk to me about your um, your your desire to spar with Gennady Golovkin. Well, what it is, he's the number one in it. It'd be, it'd be, it, might, it might be a painful beatdown, but it'd be an experienced painful beatdown. And I'm willing to, to go over there for a week um, with my fight purse, whatever it is. I'm willing to go over there for a week or two and go and train. Do you know Abel Sanchez? I get some experience in that. And if that if that fight is about, because I, I know you speak to him, um, you speak to him on your channel. So I just thought I'll get a little plug there. But I'm serious. Yeah, I'll use my fight person to go over. Let's be honest. I mean, we yeah, spoke to. I, I see no reason why not. I mean, we had. We spoke to Carson Jones. Carson Jones, we talked to him before the Ben Hall fight. The Ben Hall fight. Ben Hall found himself over in America training with Abel Sanchez. So I don't see any reason why the Commonwealth champion couldn't go and work with Abel. Um, and we recently had Vermeer Stavern on our channel. We had James Elibisher on our channel. And James Elibisher and Vermeer Stavern trained together. Stavern fights next this weekend for the World Heavyweight title. So it's, it's happened before on BWTM Sports. It'd be great to see it happen again. So let's reflect on that fight. Going into the fight, a lot of people doubted you, didn't think you'd do the business. Oh, everyone doubted me, everyone. They all did. Uh, I knew, I knew this was a different time. I just knew it. People think I've trained harder, I've not been disciplined. It's not, I've just done a diet. Just Miss Liam Cameron, what, Mr. Know It All, been doing it my own way for a certain while. I just listened now, I just started listening and doing it other people's way and I've listened to it and, um, and it just worked perfect, it worked perfect. I knew what I was capable of, I knew I weren't going to retire because I knew I weren't going to lose because I was that confident in how that me. I had the build up went and everything, just how my body reacted to this diet, my track times, my sparring, everything. Do you remember what I said to you? at the when i interviewed you the last interview you did the the after the weigh-in what i said to you do you remember what i said to you you've never seen eyes like that since carl froch were it yeah since carl froch for same edition. yes i said that i think sam sheedy said same and i could see it in my eyes when i were i didn't leave his eyes when they were opposite ring and that's how i'm gonna be now i'm gonna do aggression do you know i'm not i'm not a bike i'm not a bike foot boxer to be fair we've said this in gym we had a meeting with dennis chris and mike and stuff and they said well, start, i've got to start moving because when i start moving I, it's like a thing with sheffield work it's it's like nazim being moving and um 
being a bit flash, but I'm not. I'm like a hands up, come forward kind of fighter. You could say that you are the Britain's answer to Antonio Margarita, the way you fight. Yeah, well, that's it. That's what I like to base myself on. And the, do you know what? People don't want to see boring fights where you're moving and scoring um, points and stuff. They want to see good fights, and that she defined. And my fight were. It was great because he come back. He did come back, and when it's six, he gave me his last kind of hurrah kind of thing. And I was like, "Oh, he's coming back here!" And I was slipping. But I just got my second win, and I thought, "I've got to, I've got to finish it here." And that's where that finish come from. I just put everything into them. Well, every shot combination it were, and it just come out of nowhere. I mean, the champion at the time, Sam Sheedy, he got dropped. He got up. He got dropped. He got up. He got dropped. Yeah. He got up. What heart, what courage, what guts? Unbelievable, isn't it? Proper, what a warrior he is. Um, he actually, he's, I hit him with an uppercut on Bridger's nose. And as he was pouring, he was like trying to put the blood on me, screaming, going, ah. I was like, he's a madman. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking, to be fair, when you've dropped a guy that many times and he's bleeding. And he just keeps coming forward and stuff, wants to still take your head off. It's like, what a great fight that were. I that, must have watched it 40 times. That was a great fight. I, tell you, I, was, I, was, I was actually watching the fight and was recording at the same time, but the one thing about that fight that, that came to my mind is like watching, uh, and the crowd, I was right in the crowd, the crowd were like, uh, when you when you dropped Sheedy, it was one way. The crowd were like, ah, oh! because there are a few people that were obviously want to see Sheedy get beat. Of course, there were people that wanted Sheedy to win because when they cheered for you, it was like, yay. When they cheered for Sheedy, it was like, yeah, come on! It was like, like, yeah. literally on Sheedy's back, like, it was backyard, but it was both, both of your Sheffield fighters, but the crowd for Sheedy was unbelievable. And then when Sheedy yeah, got off the yes. deck, and he came charging back at you, the crowd was going, come on, Sheedy! I was like, wow, look at this! Yeah, great to be in it, but I'm glad it was like that. I'm glad you didn't get the crowd to the first body I'm, I'm glad he got up, man. Did, did great for himself, put up on a, his last good fight. Whether he retires, he said he retires. He made it. He made a right good, good show is it, of himself. Do you know what I mean? It was. He uh, uh, stayed down and people said, "Oh, he had a binge in that." But he got up and he showed up and he, he just he had, he had to nail him down to keep him down. And he was still trying to. We were still trying to get off ref when it was stopped. There was a point in the fight, I think it was either the sixth where, where I thought that he was actually going to come back in the fight and you were going to tie him. Yeah, well, well, that way I knew that was his last kind of hurrah kind of thing. I knew he was going to spend himself out because he, he gave me everything that round and I thought. And I think it was the end of that round. I said to you, didn't I? I said, he's going to think he's not in range. He's going to think I'm not in range and I'm going to be in range and surprise him. And that's where that uppercut come from. And the double right hand, I think it were just on Bell. And he were on the ropes and the ref counted it. But Glenn Rhodes had it for me, and we, um, him, him for me as well, didn't he? Did you see him? They're like a madman. <laughs> Calling me all names under the sun, everything. When was that before? corner. Everything. I didn't want to look at him. I just wanted to put a bag over Glenn Rhodes' head and go zip it up and say, shut up, Glenn. When was that? Oh, uh, all the way through fire, face to face, Lynn. Ref were doing instructions. He was saying something, oh, you're knackered, Lynn. You, you look dead at way. The my trainer was saying something about Sam. It was were, were funny, but that was a weird face to face kind of thing. But, yeah, it's all forgot about now. Um, when you when 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 you were in the fight, did you actually think that you were there as the the fall guy? Did you actually think that you or did you think you were considered the genuine threat? No, um, I think they all look past me. To be fair, I think I were there to be beat. Um, I, I were there to be beat. No one. I don't think other than my team thought I was gonna win. I believe, I believe Sheedy were looking for for his next opponent. I've heard, but I just knew it was my time, like I was saying, and I did, I did it, I did it. So it's not just me; I did it for my family. 
Were you surprised at the tactics Sam Sheedy used to fight you? Uh, no, I thought we were either going to... I thought we were going to try to put it on me at first. I thought he was going to put it on me. I'm sure he tried to get me in my shell because he kept on saying about me going in the shell. So I just thought I'm just going to jump on him from off. Um, now that we know at middleweight I can sustain pressure, I can take shots at middleweight because I did take some. Um, and I can keep going, I can go up and down gears. Um, yeah, it all works out well. And I'm, I'm buzzing, I'm actually buzzing. How much, was, it feels. how much was that sparring with um, Jamie Cox helpful for you? It was, it was a good spar. To be fair, because um, it was weak at fire, I got told not to, not to go into it as much as I should have, do you know what I mean? Because um, obviously he's a puncher, uh, he's south poor arm, he can clash heads. So it was basically me just like, keeping it long kind of thing it weren't like me it was just to get some confidence yeah i've sparred with Gr um, cox before before the fight yeah and it weren't like a mad spar hit me with one good shot like i said and me is still hurting <laughs> from it now <laughs> i had to go into the fight with that and sam, sam hurt it as well do you know what i mean so it's, it's all good it was all good learning but I think GGG for next sparring session. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how what's been the reception to you since you after you beat Sheedy? How has everyone responded to you? Because obviously, because I mean, did they did they feel as though you know, was the feeling like well, you know, you're the champion, fair play, or was there a lot of people begrudging you because you proved a lot of people wrong? What was it? Friends, well, not not friends, I'd say, but they all bet against me. Um, <laughs> My, I know my good friends earn uh, a lot of money on me, but people not paying the debts up, got up Jenkins, <laughs> and people just betting against me. People thought they were going to batter me, to be fair. And I'm like, am I, am I rubbish? I'm back on people thinking this. Must be absolutely, I must have gone rubbish. Thing. But I just know, stuck to the plan, don't let anyone get in my head or anything. Um, I know that's what they were trying to do, is get into my head, but. I didn't like bother me. I had one mission, and that was to be Commonwealth champion. So um, you are uh, you're, you're now the Commonwealth champion. Um, I spoke to your dad moments after the fight, literally yeah. moments. Um, some people, some 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 sons look at their father when he, they're talking after the fight emotionally, and they think, "Go on, dad, get stuck in." And the other dad, the other sons look at their dad and go, "That's a bit of a cringy, worthy moment, dad. Maybe you should keep away from the camera." What was it for you when you saw your dad saying the things that he was saying about the fight? I didn't really watch him, to be fair, because I don't really watch myself talk back anyway, so I'm not going to listen to my dad talk back. Uh, it's just something I've never done. I, I, I cringe at myself, you know, when I'm on, you know, I'll tell you, when it's like, oh, I'm just cringy a bit, but, yeah, he got, his, he got a little interview. I don't know how much what he said like, but... Well, he um, said... He said that Dennis and that will found it funny because of did he exit um, the interview halfway through it? Yeah, he kind of walked off and he went and said something. Yeah, came back, he said, Am I done? I said, No, nah, yeah, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> he was mentioning something about uh, was somebody uh, was uh, McCartney, I think it was, and people talking about uh, your, 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 your dad was talking about uh, modeling and lots of big modeling agencies wanted you and. That's yeah, what you I did a lot of modeling when I was younger. Alex and McQueen, Prada, I did Vogue magazine, I did loads of stuff. Wow. I liked it in because I, I was the, the model box, I went the box and so I thought, forget that, I'm not having this, I'm just putting all my eggs in boxing. Then I went on manure pile, just not performing with diets, losing £10 day before weigh-ins, and just, it was time to give, give everything in and just do it and now nah, i'm laugh i'm looking to be one at best in britain and i really mean that i'm not blowing smoke up my own back time i'm gonna be the best in britain do you think now liam now you're commonwealth champion what what's the responsibility do you think you have now being commonwealth champion 
it's gonna be it's got to be good in it i've not just won vacant belt i beat the champion i beat the kid what realistically be tommy langford i've already beat tommy langford i've stopped him on his feet as an amateur with 10 ounce gloves gloves on and an egg guard what would i do if i if i hit him with these gloves on with no egg guard um, i believe i i, I knock tommy langford out and you probably know that itself to be fair um you don't engage with twitter or anything um whether i get a shot or i don't um i believe i'm better than him so would you would you look for a langford fight next yeah i, I think he's fighting uh, another opponent i forgot his name he's fighting someone in britain um okay. his british title whether he wins or loses, I'll give him a shot at Conwell if he wants. So that's a fight you'd like to have. I know that your your dad was saying, yeah, onward and upward, no rematches. Let's go straight. Let's go. Let's go straight for the British title. Oh yeah, straight up. Um, Sam's packed in now. We still have full respect to Sam. We be friends now. Um, can't believe three weeks ago we're punching each other's head, and he's a lovely lad. Do you know what I mean? I know what we said before. He's, He's a great person, man. I really wish him all the best. Are you surprised at his retirement? Uh, yeah, and yeah, and no. But look, I've had five losses. I know I've not been beat up or anything. No, I've not. Um, it's been all my own fault. But I've had that willpower to carry on when people. Oh, look at this Liam Cameron. They all said it before the <laughs> fight. Look at him. He's just saying it. He's always said this is going to be that. It's going to be this. You've got to just bypass through that and just think, do you know what? One day I'm going to, every dog is going to have its day. And now I've had mine um, two weeks ago. And this is just the start. I'm 26, 27 year old. This is just the beginning. So is Liam Cam is Liam Cameron going to stick by what he did the first time and continue to? Are you going to build on that, Liam, or are you going to be one of these champions oh, that? Yeah. Um, we've got a day. We've got another. We've got a meeting with petition again on um, Wednesday to run from my diet. Yeah, I'm dreading it because <laughs> I've, I've had a bit of junk, you know, after the um, fight. But I'll be back on it Wednesday, and I think I'm going to be out February 10th. I think Dennis said on on his show um, in Sheffield. So I'll be looking forward to that, whether it's, a, whether it's uh, whatever it is, I'm not really bothered, to be fair. So in February back, so between now and February, yeah. are we going to see you going up, blowing up to light heavyweight or cruiserweight, uh, and then having to see you then battle it back down to the scales for, for February? Are you going to try and keep yourself in shape? Yeah, I've got to. I've got to. Um, this is it's momentum now. <laughs> Um, I think I'm 12, 4, 12, 5 at the minute. I was that day after weighing scales. So, yeah, I've just got to stay on it. I'm, I'm, now I'm the champion. I've got to act like the champion. So, keeping it now, progressing. what are you going to do in terms of being champion? Are you going to go around? Are you going to do any tours with a belt or, and stuff like that? What are you going to do? That, sorry, it throws a bit. Okay, what are you gonna do once you've got the belt? What are you gonna do once you get the belt? Are you gonna go and introduce yourself to other people, or what are you gonna do so, to promote yourself? Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm going. I'm going on pitch. I'm at pitch against all city. I think that's on fourth. I'm going there. And if any people's got any amateur shows or anything, I'd love to get out trophies. I'm happy to go to amateur shows and travel up wherever it is. Get trophies out and stuff, whatever it. Is. Whatever it does to take to get my name, but I'm gonna do it. That sounds good. It sounds good. Um, and your in your views about the media, how important is the media to your career, Liam? Very important. Before I didn't like well, used to doing interviews. I didn't. I'd rather turn phone off. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. They're important. They're very important. To be fair, I've just this is one of the first fights I've been on telly, so. Now people are gonna start seeing stuff about me and more interviews are coming and you're gonna get bigger and better so I'm looking forward to the future. And um, in terms of the build up and the interviews, how do you think that helped you or did it help you in the build to your fight with Sheedy? Yeah, I think because it, it caused 
cause friction between me and Sam there. <laughs> he was saying a lot of stuff I was saying, and he was a great build-up. We both were thinking gay to each other before, before, end of, before that press conference, how much interviews we were doing and stuff. You, you were dragging stuff out of him, uh, you are dragging it out of me. We are off at the end of this, we just, we just wanted a big punch-up. I mean, I, I've got to say it was it was entertaining stuff and, and to see the chemistry. But I kind of looked at it, I said, these both guys are articulate guys. They both can talk. Hey, let's see what happens when we bring them both together. And if I can bring this out of him and bring that out of him, it makes people want to see the fight. They, they really want to see the fight. Yeah, it's, it's and of course... Most tickets have ever sold as well. So we're a big... You know, it can only grow. Um, now nah, everyone wants a ringside ticket. So... Whether they buy it or don't, it's, it's about 200 more than what's asked before, so we'll see. I am, I, I, hearing that, I am so delighted for you. I really am happy for you, Liam, because, you know, that's, when, you. when creating a platform, or when the platform was created, it was all about giving pe people the opportunity to speak their truth, to, to, to share what they have to say uncensored, and you are a perfect example of that, you know? And um, I, I'm just I'm I'm delighted for you, and I'm and it's sad yeah. to see that Sam's retired, but um, I'm you know yes. I'm happy for him as well. Um, your trainer Chris Smedley, I said on my video that uh, finally Chris Smedley smiles. Yeah, isn't that an happy chap? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's normally always joking and laughing. To be fair, he's always doing daft stuff. Um, yeah. Must have caught him on a bad day. I think he's only in bed at the minute. I don't know if he's listening to the interview. But no, it's like we've done it. Early, saying he's dying with man flu. Oh, so get well soon, Chris. Um, no, it's not. I think I've spoken to before and we did interview before, and um, it was um, well, it wasn't the most exciting of interviews we did. And then you know, then I spoke to him after that, and he was like, well, you know, we. We were training well for this fight, and we believe. And he was a bit more animated about, you know, the whole thing about you and Sheedy and Glenn. He was a bit more excited about that. Yeah, let too much out, to be fair, because we didn't want Sam pulling out because we knew how good I were looking and stuff, and he didn't want to say too much. Uh, yeah. He probably didn't want to say too much. He probably, he were going, he were making his eyes so it's going to be, a, oh, it's going to be a, 50 50 uh, <laughs> and then too much and then when i interviewed him afterwards oh my god he had a smile on his face there was emotions it's like we this were looking to do a slow motion pick on a uh, slow motion video on that uh, the fight and we were looking for about half an hour <laughs> like a love affair kind of thing man crazy <laughs> 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 Big hugging, like a big relief. Yes, we've done it. And and of course, you're his first Commonwealth champion. He's he's had you since he was an amateur. Was telling me, so he's he's, he's delighted for you, and yeah. he's obviously happy oh, himself. Yeah. That's, that's it. We're back in Wednesday, bashing his hands up again. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what does it mean now? Obviously, Commonwealth champion, walking around, walking around town. Um, you know, where do you see yourself in terms of like? Sort of like the king of Sheffield. Does that is that the sort of thing that matters to you, or or, or does it mean more to you being king yeah, of England? To be fair, because obviously I've put a lot of work in. I've been, I've had the shy of boxing. Now I'm having the good of it. It's great. I want people to see that fight. Where you know, he's improved, hasn't he? He's, he's, well, not improved, but he's really showing what he's made of now. This this Liam Cameron. Like people where they're going out, they all stop him. I buy a pub over there and someone, they're offering, offering to buy me drinks and stuff. Oh, you lent me some good money that fight. Um, <laughs> do you want a drink? I'm like, I've never known, I've never known this person before. It's crazy now. So, I have half a lager, but all, you, all you need now is the keys to the city. That's it. Hey, listen, if you if you That's get it. if you get the keys of the city, I'm moving to Sheffield. That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. How do you get them? How do you get keys for the city? I don't know. We we're, we're working it. We're we're working it. We're working it. We're working it. Just tag him in this video, whoever does it. <laughs>
Right, Liam, let's talk the future. Um, so now you're champion. Um, what do you, do you think that the events that have happened previous in your life have been the making of you now? Yeah, definitely. If I would have won Zach Dunham, um, Little Blackledge, I wouldn't have been where I am now because I would have been doing the same stuff. It's made everything because I know I've had the experience of a life as well how people treat you when you lose. Yeah. I've had that experience. I can remember being in change room for Luke Blackley. It's just me and my girlfriend and we're coming we're coming out of the stadium kind of thing and rings not there no more and everyone's gone. I'm like, oh, oh God, doing walk of shame to hotel with me up to get me money. Bombing in hotel and running out so no one sees me for shame. Oh my god. The performance I did. So that's that stuff I've had to go through and stuff. But now I, I walked out of that arena with me, I didn't in sky, do you know what I mean? And what does it mean to uh Buzzing. to prove your haters wrong? Oh great, I can't wait to see them and just put them up. <laughs> can't wait to see them all. Just put four good night, pal. <laughs> Wow. Well, as I said, I'm delighted for you, Liam. I really am. Um, Thanks, so I will I definitely, I'll definitely have a word with uh, Abel Sanchez and uh, I'll send this interview over yeah. to him and um, nice definitely Thanks. do it as well. Um, uh, let me see what people have got people very quickly. So if, if there's people in the room who've got things to say. Right. Um, yeah. Mikey says, Liam Cameron can get the get to European level with Dennis Hobson behind him. Everything has clicked in place from the Sheedy fight. Has all the talent to write a story alongside the lines of Clinton Woods. Yep, I've seen this Mikey before. I don't know who, who he is, but he keeps on popping up. I'm checking interest in him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, definitely, I can do this. He's an Italian. He's two, two ranked places above me. Okay. You just never know. I could get that shot any time. Uh, I'm, I'll be ready. Good evening to Miss Cortez. Um, Mikey says, I'd love to see Cameron versus Etches, but it seems Poxon doesn't fancy the fight for his man because Liam will take Etches out in six rounds. <laughs> yeah, Etches has retired. He's, obviously, he's doing whatever he's doing. I wish him well. Um, he don't want that fight. Um, he still said take it. Um, Okay. Whether he believes he can win or not, I don't, I don't know. Mikey continues by saying, Sam said he saw a look in Liam's eyes at the weigh-in, similar to Carl Froch before he sparked at Groves. And boy, it came to fruition on fight night. Cameron looked brilliant. Yeah, like a madman. Yeah. Yes. Um, Liam's defence was great, very strong and sturdy. Sheedy was landing on gloves and expending his energy. Liam would just counter with bigger and harder shots. And impose his size effectively. This is what Mikey's saying. Yeah, that's my style to be fit gloves tight. To be honest, I can take a great shot. I can take, I've had been hit with some right bombs in my time off good, good pros and they've just not affected me. But Liam, do you know what the best, chin, do you know what the best chin in the world is? One more dog, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But I if you take much clean though, to be fair. That's good. Um, Carly Ga Garrett says, mm. Carly, good to see you in the room. Hobson's been quiet for a few years, but seems to have got lucky. But Hearn is top dog and Warren, then I'd say, hey, hey, ring star. Then I'd say Hobson, maybe he's number four. Uh, that's what Carly says. And then Mikey jumps back and says, you should be proud of yourself, brother. Very happy of you. Up there with some of them. My, of my favourite title wins in British boxing ring in recent years, up there with Woodhouse Hamilton and Nurse Jenkins. Jen yeah, Jenkins. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Mikey then continues and says, Ingram was hooked up the challenger for the world heavyweight title and a 30-year 30, 30 experience boxing mastermind. I'm sure he can have a word with Abel Sanchez to get Liam over to the summit gym. That's it. Hopefully. Keep tweeting him. Uh, Chris Smedley says, stop slagging me off, and I'm listening. <laughs> Is he listening? Yeah. <laughs> hope his man flows better. Oh, yes, I hope you're well, Chris. 
And I hope he's got a smile on his face while he's listening as well. Yeah, definitely have a smile on his face. From ear to ear, we're, we're, we're happy for you, Chris. We really are. Um, yeah, I think that's it for now. I will I will contact Mr. Uh, Mr. Sanchez. Uh, probably I'll do the interview live. Yeah, we'll, so. get a team. we'll get a team. Get a little team over. Okay. So that's what we've been on about doing. Um, going all there. I know it's going to be an expensive Chris Metley says he's smiling. Yeah. <laughs> he said he was laughing. Good. Well, it's good. It's good to see Chris Medley smiling. smiling tomorrow when folks are in numbers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. numbers come through today saying it's going to... It's on its way, so okay. Have you heard any tomorrow, news? So. Have you heard any news about the TV deal in, in terms of how they did, how it did the fight? Did numbers? I don't what? know. I think uh, probably Dennis might know or Chris, but I think it did all right to be fair. Okay, um, I think it did. Okay, um, um, watched it from where I were. Loads of people, absolutely. Um, um, Mikey says, Thoughts on Joe Gallagher? Okay, and so I can't really comment on it. Chris Medley says, "Book me on a flight." That's it. That's where we're going to the summit. Okay, that sounds great. Um, I th I don't think there's much more I can say to you at this point in time, apart from I definitely think your fight should be fight of the year. I think definitely yeah. the fight of the year. If not fight of the year, then definitely in the top three fight 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 of the year contender in British rings for sure. Thanks anyway for all you, for all your hard work as well, Janine, interviewing me and getting my name out there. I appreciate you as well. Thanks. Thank you. You know, it's a two-way street. It's a two-way street, Liam. You were always open and available for the interview. No attitude, no, no, no arrogance about you. You made yourself open and available, and that's what it's all about, really. That's so, uh, thanks a lot, mate. Appreciate you. You take care, Liam. You too, mate. Take, take care, champ. Bye. All the best. Bye bye. bye. So there you have it, Liam Cameron, the new Commonwealth middleweight champion and his trainer, Chris Smedley. Congratulations once again, Mr. Smedley. I'm sure wherever you are in, in, in um, Sheffield, you're very happy. And shout out to everyone at Lower Manor. I think it's Lower Manor Boxing Club. Big thanks, Ingram, from all the team. Thank you, Mr. Smedley. Much appreciated. And it's great to see you smiling. That's it from BWTM for the minute. We'll be back in 10 minutes with Rick Glazer, the man from America, the matchmaker. Worked many, many years with Don King and many. He worked with 42 world champions. We'll be talking to him next for his opinion on Joshua Takam. We'll be listening to his opinion with about pay-per-view numbers. He loves to talk about pay-per-view numbers. And we'll ask his opinion on Stavern versus Wilder too. Stay with us at BWTM. We'll be back shortly. Take care.